Damn, Roland's little game with the Harbinger is all over the news. I really hope Harbinger takes care of him soon. Yeah, the sooner he ascends, the better. Then again, what if it only gets worse when he does? We have no idea what exactly happens after the ritual succeeds, right? What if he gets some weird explosion powers or something? That'd be a real pain in the ass. Hey, Adrian, you there? I am. I can see that. Oh dear, I did not expect him to be so brazen. What a pyromaniac. Well, at least it's not like it affects us, right? Indeed. The death toll of this hunt was high, but it isn't like we're inflicted in any way. Which reminds me, he's dead. What? What the fuck? Adrian, what the fuck are you talking about? I thought you said the ritual was a success. It was, or it should have been. It seems that idiotic monster got carried away and killed him during torture. In part, it was also Rollins' fault for doing such a good job at provoking it by resisting. Oh damn. Oh boy. Calm down, Gale. Shit! What if it goes the same with us? This isn't how you said it would go, Adrian. Relax. This plan is still proceeding smoothly. It's only a minor hiccup. Minor hiccup? As long as neither of you repeat the mistake, it should be fine. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I still don't know about this. I'm pulling back my claim to second place. Oh, real fucking smooth, Trey. Fine then, since you're too much of a wuss, I'll go next. It seems the Harbinger had returned. I'll be right back. Bishop. The Harbinger descended the stairs to the basement, its arms hanging limply at its sides. Give me my next victim. Adrian looked up from his laptop monitor with a frown. What, already? I thought we could have a little chat. Enough with your chattering human, the monster bellowed. My next meal, now. All right, all right, Adrian said. He rolled over to a table and picked up a piece of paper. Gail Palmer lives in San Antonio, Texas. Here's her address and the instructions for the ritual. The Harbinger snatched the paper up, but as it was about to leave, it heard a loud clang come from one of the cages. It turned to see a young girl, about 10 years old, trapped in one of the cages. She didn't make a sound, but her mouth was open as if she was trying to scream, and her eyes were locked in the Harbinger. Adrian looked from the girl to the monster, and then back to the girl. You like her? She's my new pet. I already damaged her vocal cords so she can't scream, he explained. But why is it she can see you? Last time I checked, she was no seer. The Harbinger growled, both at the little girl and the man, causing the foreman to curl up into a ball. It then looked at Adrian. Mind, Mind your own business. business. With that, it stormed out of the room. Adrian watched it go with a sly smile on his face. Well, looks like the plan is coming along better than I expected, he said, spinning around in the swivel chair. Won't be long before the Harbinger is just a big, scary old fish out of the interdimensional water. <laughs> I can't wait to see how people react, he stopped himself, facing the girl. Don't you think so, Adriana? When the girl didn't reply, he looked back down to his laptop. Hmm, looks like I won't have any need for Trey anymore, though. After Gale's finished, that ought to do it. Here I am. How'd it go? Quite well. The Harbinger will be coming after you shortly. Phew, great. Time to get ready. Remind me again what your strategy is. Well, I'm not going to blow up buildings if that's what you meant. My strategy is short and sweet. It should take a few days max if Harbinger reacts the way I want it to. If it doesn't, I'll probably take even less than that. A day, maybe. That's a relief to hear. Rollin took so long I thought I'd die of boredom. Same. Anyway, guys, I gotta head out. Need to clean up around here before my guest arrives. See you on the other side. Bye. Until next time. You're sure it will work this time? Positive. I forgave the Harbinger for its transgression, and it is still none wiser than to her plan. So everything should go smoothly. That's what you always say. Don't be such a worrywart. Anyway, I have to go. 
Need to tend to Adriana. Who? Bye. The Harbinger let out a sigh. He was beginning to feel more at ease. For some reason, being in Adrian's basement had set him more on edge than usual. Although it still felt weary, the monster at least had a new hunt to focus on. In the end, that was all that mattered. Soon enough, he located the apartment number of Gail Palmer. The Harbinger was about to phase through the door, when all of a sudden, it opened up. Hey there. The woman on the other side cheerfully chirped. She was tall and quite beautiful, with short black hair and red highlights. She wore a black dress and some makeup, as if she were ready to go out on a special occasion. Come in, I've been expecting you, she said, as she motioned for the beast to enter. Needless to say, this was quite a surprise. Though the Harbinger had come to expect no less from people Adrian supplied it with, she was probably setting some sort of trap, so the Harbinger decided it would be best to go along with her little game and see what she had planned. Gail closed the door behind it. Make yourself at home, Harbinger, she said, motioning towards one of the two couches stationed on either side of a small table in the center of the room. Her apartment was surprisingly decorative and homely for one so small. Had the Harbinger been a human, he most certainly would have been taking her up on her offer. What game were you playing, human? The Harbinger asked, growling in an attempt to intimidate her. Of course, she was completely unfazed. Why, I'm just being nice to a guest, she cooed. Now, what's your poison, tea or coffee? Sorry, but I don't do alcohol. The Harbinger was silent for a moment. He decided perhaps he would play along for now and wait for the right moment to strike fear into her. So, begrudgedly, it answered. Coffee. Coffee it is, chimed the woman as she moved into the kitchen nearby. Good choice. I'm more of a coffee girl myself. It felt strange for the Harbinger to sit down on the couch. It had never sat down on a couch before. In fact, it rarely ever sat down to begin with. But for the sake of playing along with this charade, it did so. A minute later, Gail returned with two cups of steaming hot coffee. Careful, it's hot, she said, sitting down on the couch opposite to the creature. She looked him directly in the eye. Tell me something about yourself, Harbinger. I'd love to know. The Harbinger paused, glaring back at her. I am here to kill you. She stiffened a laugh. <laughs> oh, Harbinger, I know that already. What I'm asking is to tell me something about yourself. Your personality. Do you have any hobbies or interests? The Harbinger, still confused at the strange nature of this conversation, did not respond. Instead, it asked, How do you know of my existence? Did your, your computer, computer compatriots inform you? Hey now, I understand you're not human, but it's a bit rude to leave a question unanswered. Gail chided, waving her finger as if scolding a child. Both the human and the monster sat in silence for a few moments longer and seemed another were intent on answering each other's questions. In the end, the Harbinger was the one to give in. I enjoy killing, it said, and felt disgusted that it was playing human, as well as being bossed around by one. But as degrading as this was, he reminded itself that this would be all worth it in the end. Wow, what a coincidence, so do I, Gail proclaimed, taking a sip from her coffee. I don't like killing myself, though, that's a bit messy. I just get my friends to do it for me. You speak, speak of your computer, computer compatriots, compatriots? The Harbinger inquired. Oh heavens, no. I'm talking about my other friends. In fact, they're here right now. Come out and say hi, everyone. At that moment, the door to the bedroom opened up, and several small creatures came running out. The little monsters came in different shapes and sizes. The wall were clearly animalistic. Some looked like deformed canines, while others looked like strange humanoid squids. There must have been at least a dozen of them. As soon as they began running out, the Harbinger sprung into action, preparing to attack. No, stop! They don't mean you any harm, Harbinger, Kale exclaimed, as one of the strange canines jumped onto her lap. They were behaving more like simple household pets than monsters, running around and sniffing things, never even damaging anything. The Harbinger noted that Gale's bedroom was filled to the brim with black art symbols, and the pieces clicked in his mind. So, you have tamed these beasts, it said. I must admit, for human, that is impressive. 
Gail seemed to beam with pride. Why, thank you. The Harbinger scoffed, brushing a small toll-like creature away with its leg. So then, who should tame me as well? Is that your goal? Gail frowned. What? Well, of course not. You're my guest. The Harbinger sighed, sitting down. It knew it would not be able to endure this ludicrous act much longer. In all honesty, I just wanted to have a talk with you. I thought perhaps if we got to know each other, we could avoid this whole, well, killing me thing. Gail went on. Does that sound fair to you? The Harbinger simply nodded, glad that a chance to create dread finally presented itself. If we use this conversation to lead Gail into thinking that it would let her be free, and then, when it was about to leave, it would dash all of her hopes. And so, the two continued to talk until the sun set. The Harbinger did its best to act somewhat friendly and human, despite the sick feeling that resulted from doing so. Gail was quite the talker, however. She just wouldn't stop. In a way, that was best for the Harbinger. His listening was far easier than talking. It pretended to be as sympathetic as it could and take everything in, only responded when she had asked a question. Ultimately, it was a pathetic excuse for a hunt. However, the Harbinger still enjoyed itself, in a way. The whole ordeal was relaxing because not much effort was required on its part, and it was hardly a waste of time. When the time came to leave, the Harbinger allowed Gail to say her goodbyes, before haphazardly knocking her out with a whack to the head. Now, it would have its fun. It took her away, transporting the two of them to a deserted, barren stretch of land to begin the torture. Listening to the voice that had babbled insensibly of for hours scream at the top of its lungs was almost euphoric for the Harbinger, as unorthodox as the whole thing was. It was still amusing. By the time the woman was ready for the ritual, the Harbinger was getting tired again. He wasn't in the mood to think of a place to perform the ritual anymore, so it opted to just use the woman's apartment. But as it had almost finished drawing the necessary symbols on every available surface, he noticed Gale stir. Harbinger? Are you there? The Harbinger turned around. Surprised she was still conscious, unlike the previous victim, he decided to only burn her rather than pierce and cut. Since this was a rather shorter hunt anyway, most of her hair was gone, and her eyes were struggling to stay opened, as she groaned from her second and third degree burns. Harbinger, could you switch those symbols around? They're wrong. The Harbinger followed her line of sight to a few of the symbols. They were not the ones that the Harbinger knew were wrong. Oh, and those ones there. Her head slowly turned, and she looked at some more of the symbols. She kept doing this for almost all of the symbols that had been drawn as the Harbinger continued to follow the instructions he had given. Soon, the ritual was ready. Leaving only the procedure, the Harbinger did what it had been told dragging her by what little hair she had left around the room five times. During that time, she wouldn't stop mumbling something. Should have known. Should have known. The Harbinger put her back down in front of Adrian's strange symbol and stood in it. Her crusty eyelids lifted, and she noticed a symbol for the first time. Her eyes widened. I should have known. This immediately caught the Harbinger's attention, but it couldn't stop to ask now lest the ritual be ruined. It simply began repeating the incantation that it always did. Meanwhile, Gail had had a hoarse chuckle. God, you have no idea what you're saying, do you? You're basically giving him your pow- Her sentence was cut short as the Harbinger sliced her throat, letting her body fall to the floor. After the blood began to pool into the carved symbol, it waited. As usual, nothing happened. The Harbinger was about to call it a day, when suddenly, a jolt of pain ran throughout its body. It roared out in agony as it fell to the floor, clutching its head. It felt weak, weaker than it had ever felt before. It struggled to get up, but quickly lost its balance and fell again, this time actually impacting the floor, making a loud thump. This just made him more confused. Normally, those on a higher plane should not be able to impact the physical world without revealing themselves. But the more it tried to figure out what was going on, the more exhausted it had felt, and the more its head hurt. Then, there was a knock on the door. Gail, or you will write in there, came a voice. Instinctively, the Harbinger crawled across the floor and over to the door. It was a human. Though its first thought should have been to flee, 
It found that it shouldn't care to. Its instinct screamed at it. Humans needed to be killed. That was all I could think about. Realizing it can no longer face the door for some reason, the Harbinger clumsily clutched the doorknob and flung it open. The man on the other side was about to scream, but he never got the chance to, as the claw reached out and went into his open mouth, then through the back of his head. The Harbinger retracted its claw and set about ripping the human apart. For some reason, it no longer cared about the hunts or amusement. It was as if all of that had been stolen away, leaving only its bare and most monstrous instincts. It just wanted to kill. That's when I remembered. Adrian. Adrian Bishop. The one who had begun all of this. Who better to kill than him? I can't believe it. I can't believe we all fell for your little trap. We should have known. I should have known. Gale is dead. The Harbinger is on a motherfucking rampage for fuck's sake. It killed 15 people. It's on the news! I'm dead. Oh God, fuck, I'm so dead. And it was all a waste too. What a fucking life. It was all a lie, wasn't it? I bet it was. Should have known not to trust a fellow goddamn psycho. Ascension was a load of bullshit, wasn't it? Getting into the higher plane was impossible all along. You just wanted to kill us for your own sick amusement. Or maybe you just wanted to be the only one to ascend. Is that it? Got nothing to say for yourself. Fucking figured. You're wrong. Oh, don't give me that. You think it isn't obvious now? We spent months working on that ritual. It was theoretically perfect. It shouldn't have failed. The only reason it did because you fucked it up on purpose. Theoretically. Listen to me. It never would have worked. Not without a great amount of energy. An amount far greater than anything we could extract from any of ourselves. Why did you think I needed the Harbinger to be the one to do it instead of one of you or someone else? I was never performing the Incension Ritual in the first place. The ritual that I did perform on Gale and Roland, however, did indeed require a monster to be the caster. Because the target was never Gale or Roland to begin with. Their psychic energy was only to be used as a conduit. I see. So then, I suppose I'm next? <sighs> Whatever. There isn't anything I can do to stop. Actually, I'm next. It seems I was a little too cautious in my calculations. I only needed two powerful seers to complete the process, alongside those bottom feeders I've used. The Type 7 glowing behind me is proof enough of that. <laughs> you fucking piece of shit. Oh, it sounds like the final sacrifice has arrived. Don't worry though. After I'm finished here, I'll be sure to pay you a visit. The door to the basement was ripped right off its hinges, and Adrian's guest of honor made its way down the steps. The light switch didn't need to be flicked, for the room was filled with the bright light of the spell circle. In the middle, sitting comfortably on a swivel chair, sat the man himself. Welcome back, Harbinger. Had a nice night out. The Harbinger charged, teeth and claws bare like a wild animal as it ran towards to claim its prize but it never made it past the circle. The bright light blinded the beast, and feeling many times stronger than the uneasiness that had felt here before overcame it. It was a feeling that it was unfamiliar with, yet it recognized the feeling of the power radiating from the circle all too well. I'm glad to see you're excited, as am I. I've been waiting for this day for many years, you know. Growling, the Harbinger tried to overcome the feeling, but to no avail. It cannot bring itself to enter the circle, no matter how strong its bloodlust. Anyway, I suppose it's time for my monologue now. I suppose you, in all your simple-minded rage, couldn't understand, but I feel obligated to explain, even if it's to the empty shell of your former self. Hadrian cleared his throat and smiled as he continued. All of that you, that has suddenly disappeared, 
is actually here, if you didn't know. He extended his arms, motioning to the circle around him. The ritual I was having you perform was sapping away your power. The very essence of your being, rather, and sealing it away. Using the ritual psychic energy of your victims as a way to channel it. The stronger a seer the victim was, the bigger of a chunk would be sucked away. And, as to make the irony sweeter, the incantations you spoke were literally just you giving the ritual to instruction to take your energy and redirect it back here. But it didn't steal all of you away, not only because that was impossible, but because it didn't need all of you. You see, you monsters are hilariously simple creatures. No matter how advanced your intellect, you're only a bit driven by the instinct and desire to kill and induce fear in people. It's all rather... trite. Adrian chuckled a bit. Yes, since I was small, I've watched your kind kill and break people's minds. I even followed in your footsteps. Mostly out of pure boredom, mind you. It was fun for a while. But I think I'm ready to move on to bigger things now. Evolve a little, you know? The Harbinger knew now. It had never felt it before, but it knew now what this feeling must have been. It was not rage, or amusement, or bloodlust. It was fear. Fear. Of Adrian Bishop. I find that power such as this is quite wasted on the likes of you. For centuries, centuries, mind you, you've been using it to simply go about killing in the most dreadful ways possible. Your psychology won't permit you to have any higher ambitions. But mine does. Adrian stepped out of his chair, moving to the edge of the circle. From his pockets, he pulled out a pistol, aiming it at the harbinger with that smug, knowing grin on his face. Believe me, your power is in better hands now. Superior hands. When I ascend to the higher plane, no one will be safe. He cocked the pistol. I don't care about who's interesting or unique. I don't just look at things on an individualistic level like you do. No, my goal is the entire world. I don't just have one person begging for mercy. I want the entire human race to be wishing they have never existed. His smile grew from ear to ear, bordering on deranged. And so, thanks to you, I can take the first step towards that goal. But alas, as much as I may brag, I do see the value in sticking to one's roots. By now, the Harbinger was sitting in a ball on the ground, as if it would make the monster go away. Hadrian extended his leg and put a foot on the creature's head triumphantly. I think I will always have a particular fondness for the freaks. Like you, Harbinger.